SpaceX Starbase has an enigmatic skull. Yeah, it is still a Starship nose cone, but like nothing before. Why SpaceX engineers make this difference? What's special about this nose cone? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. For the first time on August 12, SpaceX transported this mysterious nose cone from mid-bay to the outside. At a glance, we can observe a door taller than the height of an average adult. It seems this door is covered with a type of black nylon fabric and lacks a solid structure. This suggests that SpaceX will frequently utilize it, and surely it holds more intriguing aspects beyond its exterior. Notably, as it rolled out a panel equipped with valves and electrical connections emerged on its underside. And just when you thought things couldn't become more enigmatic, a sticker boldly proclaimed HLS. Wow, this nose cone is indeed a part of the Starship HLS mock-up, something that will take humans back to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. In reality, this HLS nose cone has been produced long before initially intended for Ship 21, but ultimately becoming a part of Ship 22. Therefore, it still has a thermal shield and a cap support. When Ship 22 was dismantled due to obsolete issues, its nose cone was brought to mid-bay. At mid-bay, nose cone 22 underwent internal gutting and was redesigned with an evenly hexagonal floor. Unlike the enclosed floors of other remaining nose cones, the floor panel of nose cone 22 has an open central hole and is cut entirely around the outer ring adhering to the cone's edge. Moreover, the nose cone integrates an electronic arch and is stacked onto a single ring, shortening its length compared to other nose cones. This also implies it lacks a payload bay. What makes this even more intriguing is the prototype's unexpected destination. It didn't head to the launch site or Massey's. Instead, it took a detour to the payload processing facility, settling gracefully on a freshly poured concrete patch. This strange turnout lets his nose cone have a new coat. Images show SpaceX workers carefully applying a coat of white paint to the nose cone. The application of white paint might give the nose cone an appearance resembling the front section of the Starship HLS. However, the primary purpose of this paint job is not completely to achieve that similarity. Most rockets and spacecraft are typically painted in either white or darker colors. White is favored because it helps maintain a cooler temperature for the vehicle before launch, which is particularly advantageous when exposed to scorching sunlight. Additionally, maintaining the rocket's body temperature reduces fuel evaporation and enhances overall safety. Anything that can help keep the rocket cooler without increasing its weight becomes a cost-saving measure. These are the effects of painting a rocket white. As for the HLS nose cone, which is placed outside the environment, the ability to absorb heat from sunlight could affect the interior tests. Therefore, painting a significant portion of it, white may be intended to reflect sunlight, making the nose cone cooler. For a Starship, HLS ensuring everything operates well and safely is a prerequisite, especially since it will be the means to transport humans to the moon. Starship HLS undoubtedly cannot afford to be without a life support system to protect humans from the harsh environment of space. In short, while Starship is continuously being enhanced and comprehensively developed, perhaps the crucial focus for the lunar variant of Starship in the coming period is the successful completion of life support system testing within the nose cone. In fact, this is not the first Starship HLS prototype to be built at Starbase. In 2021, SpaceX had already built a white HLS nose cone, but sometime later they seemed to destroy it. Last year, a NASA document showed photos of the Starship human landing system, elevator, and airlock prototype. The document is a set of presentation slides with images of Artemis astronauts checking out the elevator and airlock, including an image labeled Crew Cabin VR Evaluation. It is probably a virtual reality video simulator of how the Starship cabin interior will look and operate. The current NASA schedule calls for the uncrewed lunar demo mission to be launched in 2024 ahead of 2025's Artemis 3 mission. 
the individual missions will require both the Lunar Starship and multiple Starship tanker launches to allow for the former to be refilled on orbit ahead of its trip to the Moon. However, the exact number of launches needed for refueling remains unclear. The main challenge for the HLS program relates to multiple agencies and vendors aligning with the Artemis schedule. Musk previously insisted that HLS Starship won't be the pacing item. However, NASA officials cited the Apollo program where the lunar lander wasn't ready resulting in launches without that element. Amit Kshatriya, Deputy Associate Administrator for the Moon to Mars program and the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate at NASA headquarters shared, because of the dependence on that schedule, you know, we are looking at all options, and we've asked all of our contractors to bring their production in as much as they can because, of course, we really, really want to fly this mission the way we have designed it. But the other important thing from an insurance standpoint is to keep flying. So NASA is encouraging everyone to aggregate as much hardware as they can for us. And then depending on where we are with the rest of the production, just like they did during Apollo where they downloaded and they flew missions when the lander wasn't available, we will choose those missions based on the hardware that's available. That's kind of our overarching strategy and that from a production standpoint, we think it's very important to communicate to all of our vendors, including SpaceX. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.